that composer has seen something that I couldn't get to. And then they make a piece where you just go, oh my God, this is like, it's like you found my voice for me. Thanks, Callum, for joining me for these three questions. This is the wonderful Callum Gaffray, uh, trumpet extraordinaire. Um, uh, yeah, originally from Perth, but it's been all over the, I don't know, lived in Berlin for a while and then in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, plays all sorts of trumpet-related things, um, jazz, symphonic music, um, contemporary <laughs> sort of new music and, uh, yeah, ev- everything and uh, anything on the trumpet. So thank you for taking the time yeah my pleasure so the first question is why do you have music in your life yes that is a good question um some days absolutely no idea some days couldn't live without it but yeah um i guess there's you know from the very beginning you know why that kind of came into my life like uh in the family home music was just kind of like, it was almost like a language that we spoke at home. Um, You know, my dad, there was just always music going on, always kind of singing or ridiculous singing happening at home. (laughs) Um, But, you know, my, my dad had a really good, uh, or has a really good record collection. Um, He, he bought this, just bought a whole record collection from this guy who used to be the, um, I think like the limo driver or like the taxi driver for all these artists that used to come out to Australia. Really? So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that it must have been a job like that. So we've got um, we've got autographs of like Ellington and Louis Armstrong and like I think Basie. <laughs> it's really it's crazy. What? Yeah, you, probably, I, you, you probably have told me this, and I was in no state to hear the answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I would have hit it when he came over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Lock so, the record door. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just kind of grew up with, you know, all these classic albums and some really good music just around all the time. Every Saturday morning was like kind of blue, blue train. Um, so, yeah, there was, there was a lot of exploring like that. And, you know, my dad and, you know, my whole family have been really supportive of me uh, with music from the start but you know my brother as well he was a I would just kind of absorb the stuff he was listening to Chili Peppers Hendrix Nirvana and um he was a great guitar player um and my sister has you know she's a really beautiful singer writes beautiful music and and my mum would always just kind of sing this kind of this like quasi opera in the kitchen <laughs> it was <laughs> like <clears throat> like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I won't comment on it. Um, but it's, you know. You just so did. We just kind of, you just did. I just did, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it was just, and, and I, I, it was just always around. And I notice now, like, um, me and, like, you know, my housemates or me and my partner, like, we we just constantly sing at each other. And it's, so that's a weird thing that I think comes from the family home. So um, for better or for worse. Um but yeah, like I just had a lot of support when I was young. You're one of those people, Matt Jodrell, uh, Johannes Lubers, Alice Humphreys, then like Matt Hoy, Ian Grandage, Cat Hope. People really looking out for me, which I owe so much to, to a lot of people that saw something in me. And then, you know, one, one thing leads to another, as you know. And um, yeah doors just kind of kept opening and you know not without some hard work but um yeah like yeah well with, I don't know with, how I started yeah with, yeah with that hard work where did where did that um where did that want for hard work come from because I mean you were you were quite you were always well you probably still are you're always the young one you were always the young one in mm. the group and you were everyone always saw the potential so there, there was obviously yeah. hard work in there somewhere yeah yeah i mean like i think i was just i I was a real trumpet nerd when i was like you know when it came to the weekend i would play three hours three or four hours playing with play longs on the weekends Mm -hmm. and um 
Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think I've got a pretty mixed work ethic. Like I, at times I work very hard and other times I find it hard to, but I think it really is exactly what you said. It's, it's those older, being around those older people was, um, I was, I've always been the younger one. Um, and, and it kind of gets you to just want to just be on their level. And, um, yeah, like, (laughs) so that, that was probably something that pushed me along and Mm. also just, I don't know, I just was so, so excited by, you know, like when I was really young, like 13, my dad would take me to go see Wajo at like the, I forget what pub it was in Fremantle. Um, and, you know, seeing Andy Fizzen and just going nuts and seeing how people really loved that stuff like that was, was really inspiring. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Cause I think I still work pretty hard and really kind of push against some, some locked doors, maybe just mentally or conceptually. And, um, always trying to find, I think that, that one different thing, you know, that one, uh, thing that really expresses your your personal voice i think i think it also once it starts getting momentum it's it's really easy to ride that thing and um you see hard work translated into something that is good and people Mm. enjoy it um sometimes you see it turn into something that doesn't get appreciated at all and you actually really don't like but you gotta do that i think you gotta respect the the process Mm. yeah and um yeah that was a good question um like it's a good answer and, yeah like <laughs> in terms of um you know why do i have music in my life now um yeah like i'm sort of surprised it, it has stuck around because it's it's really changed kind of appearances so many times over the years you know i, mm. I basically gave up playing well, I was, as you know, I was a complete, you know, jazz nerd um, and loved playing that stuff. Then, you know, it took a, a pretty long hiatus with that when I went to Berlin in even actually, even when I went to Melbourne in 2012, um, played a bit less jazz. And then when I was in Berlin 2015, I was there for four years. I basically didn't do any jazz gigs. So, um, getting into new music like contemporary repertoire and experimental performance and symphony orchestra stuff, chamber orchestra stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, there's been some really, really hard low points Mm. as well. Um, but I keep coming back to it. I think because of that same thing that got me interested when I was like, when I was 16, I think I decided, okay, I'm going to do this it's still that thing. I still put on miles, you know, sixties miles and, and then it all makes sense. It all just goes, Mm. yep, this is why you do it. It, And it's, it's settled. Mm. Does it, do you, no matter what I'm playing. Would you change anything in your journey sort of looking back or are you sort of happy with, you know, what you, what you, what are you happy with what you've become? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good question. Cause yeah, like I, at times I, I, I look back at really pivotal moments where I go, was that the right thing? I don't, I don't regret any of the things that I've done, any of the things I've pursued. I think I, I, I would looking back, I would look at why I did some of those things and maybe uh, over the years, there have been some things I've done for, a reason that was maybe trying to please someone else or um, because I felt maybe I owed um, someone, <clears throat> which is, you know, often just imaginary. So yeah, it, it's not straightforward. It's not, it's, mm-hmm. I couldn't say flat out no regrets um, because yeah, there are some things when I, I wish I'd been a, maybe a little more uh, honest with what I really, really wanted instead of what I thought, someone else might like or Mm. you know maybe owing a teacher something um or you know i think i did a lot of orchestral playing because um you know you sit in the principal trumpet chair playing these huge melodies over 80 other people and that's a pretty that that that's like ego 
Um, and I totally respect the people that do that and do it really well. Um, but I think I got kind of really carried away with it. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I now realize that's something that I don't really want to do. And, um, there are some gray areas. Yeah. And it's also, it's also easy to look back with hindsight, you know, when you're in the moment, it kind of, you know, it usually makes sense, you know, because you're in that mindset and so you can't, you can't sort of step forward in time and go, okay, what would, what would future Callum think, you know, in the middle of a pandemic (laughs) when he's got time to think about it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and I think you should just do the things that get you excited at the time when you're young. Totally. Just do it and you'll have time to deal with it later. Good time to regret like those doing... things later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that's a, that's something that I've I've had that kind of conversation with myself quite mm. a bit over the years. But I also I don't regret a lot of the people that I was able to meet through through yeah. all the things that I've pursued, you know? And um it's also got me to this point now, like I'm glad it hasn't been just a straight path to, mm. to going, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to pick this one style of music and it's just going to take me there. And it all just works out like a plan. Like I think I have a bit of perspective. Um, yeah. That I couldn't have got gotten if I had just stuck with the one path. Mm. So that's, that's made it, um, you know, I've got a, I've got friends in a lot of different scenes, which is is nice as well. And mm. um, yeah, that that makes it a really colourful kind of uh, network. I think. Yeah, totally. Well, the second question uh, is, how do you make music? Hmm. Usually with a trumpet. Ah, oh, stupid you, answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's actually correct yeah um no it's um it's yeah similarly to to what we were just saying like it's it's really changed over the years and <clears throat> um i've had times when i've really loved just being part of other people's bands and um and projects and but it, these days um i do a lot of projects that are just myself um so when i started getting into like contemporary repertoire there was a lot of solo repertoire that I wanted to get into so that really got me exploring my instrument in a really um detailed way Um, because some of the things that are required um of you in these contemporary classical pieces gets you to do some very refined techniques um so that's one big way that I like to engage with music is really exploring my instrument um and yeah, do you, so, do you, so, and yeah. do you, you know, when you're talking about exploring the instrument, do you sort of, do you, cause I know you commission a lot of work. Do you mm-hmm. sort of explore through the, the commissions or do you, you know, spend a lot of time just like, okay, now I'm going to, I don't know what you do. But yeah. <laughs> you know, now I'm going to yeah, yeah. work on how the air comes out of that valve hole or something, you know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like it, it, it's, it's a uh, different kind of, um, yeah, variations on that. Like say with, a like, I, I really like collaborating with, with composers, um, and collaborating with other groups of musicians, but I've done a lot of, um, yeah, new compositions. So often in this kind of back and forth, this exchange is really interesting where, um, sometimes I'll have the spark and I'll go, ah, there's this, I, I, I can imagine a piece that gets me playing in this kind of way. And then I'll think, Oh, who's, who are the composers? Or maybe I've seen something come up and I go, ah, that would be a really nice meeting Mm. point between some of my ideas and their ideas. Um, Other times it's like just really admiring someone's work and going, Hey, I would love to work with you on something. I got no idea what it would be like, Mm. Um, which, you know, can be, and all these things have got, successful versions and unsuccessful versions as well. Yeah, Collaboration yeah. Is, is not a straightforward thing. Um, so yeah, it, it's, I, I really like just, you know, a new piece or something or, or even, a, you know, just a contemporary classical piece or even like watching an improviser like Scott Tinkler or Peter Evans or mm. there's, there's heaps of great trumpet improvisers seeing how they get really detailed on something and 
just doing that process for myself and finding sounds that I really like. Um, so it literally could be like you said, you know, how the air travels from one valve, you know, taking bits out of the instrument, chucking stuff on, putting another bell on the trumpet, which I mean, who would know, be stupid enough to do that? I, know, I, don't, I don't know why you'll do that, but um, <laughs> like, so, and then, you know, involving like electronics as well and some close microphoning stuff. There's, there's so much, so many ways of relating to the instrument, like whether it's happening here, some kind of valve technique, some kind of slide technique, combination of the two, how, how you're miking up the bells, what electronics you might do, how you're amplifying it. There's so many stages and you can, work with the combinations between them and i find that sort of process um a bit more interesting than trying to make a really impressive piece that that shows off this ultra virtuosic player Mm. i think it's you know otherwise you know it's okay to take time to slowly explore the instrument and not try and put everything in one piece and provide an experience to, to listeners where it's, it's, it's really about focusing in um, mm. one technique for 30 minutes. Why not? You know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I guess, you know, if you, if you are someone who can, yeah, really focus in on attention to detail. Um, yeah. Yeah. That can be an amazing outcome for, you know, for the performer and also, you know, a listener as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, yeah, that's it. Like um, so many pieces uh, we have yeah, you know, or collaborations where I've got no idea what it, the process is going to be like, no idea what the piece will end up being like. Mm. And then after it, I'm completely transformed. Like that composer has seen something that I couldn't get to. Mm. And then they make a piece where you just go, Oh my God, this is like, it's like you found my voice for me, mm. which is, you know, the, that's not how things should go, but like, that's super interesting. Uh, I've had, yeah. I've had that happen recently with pieces where it's like, someone just shows you something that, um, kind of about yourself that you didn't know existed, which is mm. super inspiring. Yeah. And for, for someone else to kind of, to bring that out. Yeah. Someone to bring something out that you didn't even know was there. That's, that's very, yeah. very cool. Yeah. I love it. I really love it. Mm. Well, that maybe brings us to the third question, which is what excites mm-hmm. you musically right now? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think my, my listening has really, like, broadened over the years, although some days I still put on stuff that I was listening to when I was 14. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how you kind of come back to those things. It's like a yeah. nice, comfortable blanket or pair of yeah, shoes or yeah. tracky pants. Yeah, or, <laughs> or the amount of stuff that someone told you about, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and you were just like, no, 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 that trumpet play sucks, man. Like, I'm more of a Lee Morgan guy or something. And then you check it out, and you're like, oh, my God, why did I yeah, Why did I? Like, yeah. yeah. All, all, this, all this stuff you feel like you should listen to or shouldn't listen to, it's funny mm. how it kind of drops away. Um, so, yeah, like, and I, I really like experimental ambient music um like Im- improvised music um i listen to a lot of rap um which i think is i think having an appreciation of jazz is uh, it kind of gives you a perspective listening to some rap as well because mm. it's it's kind of it's a similar art form i, I think and mm. just incredible poetry as well uh, sort of happening in that music um yeah and and just feeling like i can just discover whatever i like there's no no rules with listening that we can sometimes feel um but yeah in terms of that that's like listening in, in terms of playing um or you know communities of players i i really love just seeing how many niches are forming mm. um which is quite cool. It's like, 
anyone can buy a synthesizer now and make some really interesting electronic music and, you know, for better or for worse. And, Mm. um, you know, and then YouTube, all these channels allowing people to just like put their stuff up and it's like proper, you know, high quality stuff. Mm. I really love just seeing, um, seeing people go really hard with something that is so niche. It's, Mm. um, I'm so into that just, really indulging in their own voice and and yeah I was, I was actually thinking about this this is kind of related to this like uh, and you can reflect on this really well I think is the amount of people we've we've known for a really long time who the music they make now compared to 20 years ago or something is mm. just or what they're even doing in their life is like so different mm. um you know Alice Humphreys you know yeah like, we used to play jazz together and now she's, she just wrote me a double bell trumpet piece mm. that's like really beautiful and still her, but you know, it's a totally different format. Like mm. so many of our colleagues and um, yeah, I find that really exciting, like and inspiring to see people just get deeper into their, their thing. Yeah. And also to find, to find their thing as well, you know, because we all sort of went to mm. the same, we kind of all studied at the same place, you know, through Whopper and, yeah. and Wajo and, and that, that sort of thing. But then just seeing, yeah, the journeys, you know, some people mm. are, um, you know, yeah, where they sit in the music scene, they're not necessarily playing their instrument anymore, but they're doing, you know, really interesting electronic stuff or, you know, working in theatres yeah. or, um, yeah, lots of, you know, composing music for double bell trumpets <laughs> um, yeah, or people yeah, playing yeah. double bell trumpets when they should be yeah. you know, playing jazz. No, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's just, but it's, it, I mean, that, that is, I think the, the, one of the beautiful things about music is that you, you start on this path and you think, yep, I'm going to do this. And then you end up yep. doing that. And it's like, how did I get here? But thank God I got yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. It's... And and also to keep, you know, I think keeping long-term relationships um, all with, you know, we're all doing very different things, but there's still just that common, you know, love and appreciation and openness yeah. to all these different styles as well. It's not like, oh, I'm not going to talk to Callum anymore. He plays, he plays classical trumpet now. It's like, no, that's incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. And, and it's like, I think that's, that's something I wish I'd, I was a bit more conscious of um, being a bit younger, but you know, you, you got to learn it somehow, but yeah, those relationships, mm. like they're, they're almost all you have um, because mm. they're the things that actually, you know, bind the whole, the, these networks together. Um, and also the things that continue to build each other up, you know, mm. it, it actually is a, a, um, a two way relationship or a, yeah. or a multi-way. You know? mm. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Well, thank you. That was very, uh, very insightful. Nice to, oh, n- good. nice to get deep with you again, Callum. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. 